Cool, guys. So, so far we have seen, I think, uh, TestNG, almost all the concepts. One topic is pending in TestNG that is called data driven approach. So, data driven, I'll tell you at a time of page object model. So, today I'm going to cover uh, two important things. <clears throat> that uh, first is how to read properties file, <clears throat> like how to create your own page uh, object repository, as well as uh, we will see how to generate logs as well. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start. <clears throat> so first we will see how to read properties file. So first we need to understand what do you mean by properties. So whenever you have to design framework, you have to use some properties which are global properties. Global properties like it can be, you know, your browser name, your URL, username, password. So these are the very standard uh, variables standard values that you have to use throughout your framework so in that case what we have to do we have to declare them as a global property or maybe somewhere in configuration file so what we do we will create one file a simple file that is called properties file Okay, so let's see the properties file name is config.properties. Okay, config.properties and click on finish. So this config.properties file will have those properties. In config.properties, we will not write any Java code or nothing. We will simply write some properties in the form of key and value pair format. So, and it's a very famous interview question as well that how to read properties and it will help you to, uh, you know, while designing the framework as well. So simple properties, let's see my property name is browser is equal to Chrome, right? Browser is equal to Chrome. So this is my property. Second property we can write, let's see, what is your URL? Let's see my URL is... Uh, not in a string like this because my URL will not be changed, right? So, why to hard code in the script? Better we write <clears throat> in the form of properties www. Let's see freecrm.com. After that, we can write something like let's see what is your username because username password will remain same always. password is equal to one two three right so let's see these are the four different properties i have defined so properties are very simple <coughs> simple in the form of available in the form of uh, key and value pair format so browser is the key chrome is the value url is the key and value like this okay now the question is that how to read these properties and how to use these properties in your in your framework or in your code so to read these properties we have to use java so how to use java in that case simple we will create a java class let's see my class name is read properties select the main method let's see and click on finish and uh, what we will see that uh, we have to read this particular property and proper property file is config.properties okay so how to read properties the question is how to properties file to read properties file what we have to do is only three steps are there the first step is we have to create the object of properties class so property class is already available in java you just need to create the object of properties like this properties prop is equal to new properties just a minute guys let me close the window my balcony window a lot of disturbance is coming just a... yeah sorry for that so properties class is already available in java so you just need to create the object of properties class and uh, just import this properties from java.util package like this 
okay and uh, this is the properties file so you can give any properties name config dot properties my dot properties selenium dot properties whatever the name you want to give it's not compulsory that okay you have to use always config name you can use any name but the extension will be dot properties and read prop dot java is the class that i have created so properties prop equal to new properties simple first create the object of properties class and this class is already available in java okay inside the util package now after that what we have to do we have to create the object of one more class that is called file input stream class you need to remember this name file input stream create the object let's see ip is equal to new file input stream okay and uh, just import this file input stream class object in that object you have to pass where exactly your config.properties file is available so you have to give the path the config.properties file so this is the file right click on it go to properties and this is a location simple so copy this and paste it over here okay let me write in the next line like this like this okay and it will give you one suggestion that add throws declaration so add it fine so this is the properties uh, file path that you have to give after that what we have to do we have one method with this properties class object reference you need to use one method prop dot we have to load this file input stream class load this ip object reference prop dot load so what exactly it is doing file input stream class is making the streaming making a connection between your java code and the config dot properties file and then what we have to do prop dot load means load all the properties which are available inside the config dot properties file so if you have four properties it will be loaded okay by using this method prop dot load and again it will give you one suggestion add throws declaration simple add it okay that's it after that you can read so connection has been established by file input stream and then you have loaded all the properties you just need to access those properties now so how to access let's say i want to print the value of browser what is the value of browser chrome okay so you just need to use this reference prop dot get property method is there and pass the key what is my key key name is browser this is the exact key that you have to pass which is available here inside this properties file so my key is browser this is the value key is url this is the value username key password key okay so i have to pass the exact to get our property in double quotes because all the keys and values are available in the form of strings so this is the string browser string we have to pass over here and now if you run this program it will print it should print chrome see chrome is getting printed right so you can comment any properties also let's see i don't want to use this property so you can comment it how to comment in properties file simple put hash okay so it will be commented now if you read these properties it will give you null because browser property is not available so simple it will give you null similarly if there is a spelling mistake let's see i have written capital b over here and here you are passing small b in that case also it will give you none because it's not available inside the configure properties so make sure that whatever the properties you are using over here same properties you are using in your code as well okay now if you run it it will give you chrome fine so always remember one thing also sometimes what people say that they did like they did they do some mistakes like this spaces they have given so don't give any space like this okay 
and they gave some space like this also so it should be exact match otherwise it will give you none okay so how to use this i have got this browser properties equal to chrome now i can design my logic like this that if so first i'll do one thing that uh, i'll create one string variable a string browser name is equal to prop dot get property and the property name is browser right so I'll store in a string variable that is my browser name and I'll use like this browser name dot equals if it is equal Chrome then launch Google Chrome so we know that how to launch Google Chrome so to launch Google Chrome, we have to use this, right? So that is fine. Now we will do one thing. We will create this web driver instance just after the class. Let's see like this or not after the class. Let's see just inside the main method for timing so that we can use this driver anywhere okay so driver equal to new chrome driver so please launch google chrome if browser name is equal to chrome then we can write else if else if what if browser name is equal to browser name is equal to firefox then launch what then launch Firefox driver so for Firefox also we have to set the property for Geekode driver and all so let's see I'm not right I'm simply writing the code like this driver is equal to new Firefox driver okay else if and we can write one more else if <coughs> else if browser name is equal to Safari <clears throat> then launch safari driver okay then we can write something for IE as well internet explorer so I then launch internet explorer driver right so for different uh, browsers I have written all these things and then I'll write else system dot print ln let's see it might be possible that I haven't written anything inside the config dot properties for the browser value so simple I can write that let's see browser name is equal to null so simple it will not this condition will not be satisfied okay this also not satisfied this also not satisfied it will come inside the else part and then we will print no browser value is given right so you can print some message like this no browser value is given now, yeah we have to give the geeko driver okay that we can do it later forget about geeko driver so you have to give the path of geeko driver over here for firefox so i'm not covering firefox as of now so what will happen that uh, simple i'm writing browser equal to chrome the moment you write browser equal to chrome it will read the property and chrome dot equals chrome condition is satisfied it will come inside this and then it will set the property and then it will launch google chrome right and tomorrow if i'm writing i, I just want to change my i don't want to execute on chrome now i want to execute on firefox same thing you can make it firefox like this right and then simple it will come over here it will read the property prop dot get property the browser will be firefox now right so browser name is equal to firefox firefox is equal to chrome no firefox is equal to firefox yes condition is satisfied it will come over here it will launch firefox right same thing for safari same thing for internet explorer so you can write multi browser logic like this this is a very important logic most of the frameworks 99% cases we will be using like this 
okay so this is the exact code you have to write okay in your framework also if you are using in your company or maybe in your uh, project if you want to implement you can read the properties file from the uh, properties and then simply you can write the logic for browser initialization so multiple browser initialization you are doing with the same if else conditions right so this is very powerful otherwise what we have to do that you have to comment this line or maybe you have to change your chrome driver to firefox driver and then safari driver, the internet explorer driver so again and again you have to change your script so this is not a good practice right so that's why we always write in the form of if else conditions like this so tomorrow if you want to change it to any browser it will be so let's see my browser name is chrome chrome is equal to chrome right browser name will be chrome and chrome is equal to chrome condition is satisfied it will come over here it will set the property and it should launch google chrome so let's run it let's see it is launching or not see it is launching although i'm not writing any uh, url over there but it is launching my chrome so once this task is done what i'm gonna do that simple now i have to launch driver dot get get is what is url so we have to pass the url so instead of writing the url over here that http www.abc.com or whatever so we will get the properties again from config dot properties file so what is my property name is url so we will read the property once again how to read prop dot simple get property and my url is this url okay so url is this url So driver.get prop.get property URL will be like this. Selenium grid and all we will see it later, guys. This is different. So that is for parallel testing. So yeah, that we will do it later. That will be that will be handled by testing.xml. Okay. I'm not talking about parallel testing. This is the sequence testing. Okay, sequential order we are at. So driver.get prop.get property url will be launched so let's see url is getting launched so see vcrm.com is getting launched right so one quickly I'll, i want to tell you that don't use selenium grid selenium grid is not a successful project okay especially for uh you know parallel testing point of view there are a lot of bugs a lot of timeout exceptions and uh, if you run your test cases without selenium grid it will be passed but with selenium grid it will be failed so there are a lot of uh, i mean mistakes are there in selenium grid it is not able to handle the load properly it is load means the test case is load properly so sometimes your x path is absolutely fine it is getting failed and you need multiple machines as well and all those such stuff so selenium grid just avoid for parallel testing as of now okay so anyways so here we are not talking about parallel testing guys we are talking about the sequential testing the moment you change the browser the specific browser should be okay launched so this url also i have removed the hard coded value that uh, this url generally we write like http dot freecrm.com i am taking this property from here now similarly what i can write that uh, i have to launch the url and then i have to enter the username and password so i'll write like this driver dot find element by dot name and dot send keys so send keys we have to pass the username right so for send keys we have to pass the username so my username is this again this is a username so what i'll write simple i'll write like this again prop dot get property so the pro this property also i'm taking it from properties file same thing for password 
driver dot find element by dot name dot send keys prop dot get property and the property is password right and then so we will take the name property from freecrm.com name equal to username and for password also name, name. Okay. right and then i have to click on login button right so to click on login button so for login button click quickly i hope that should that pop up should not come but let's see we will write type equal to submit and value equal to login so let me write quick text path let's see dot click so this is a logic that i have written very simple login i'm doing but this username and password i'm taking it from properties so let's not concentrate on xpath as of now so if you run it so it should enter the username and the password okay because we are reading it from properties file okay so it is reading from properties file that's fine although this xpath is maybe getting failed because of some reason so we will see no such element input oh, oh, oh. type we have to write Let's run it again, otherwise we will ignore it. Okay, anyways, maybe it's still getting failed. So maybe X path issue that we will do it later. So ultimate point is that uh, we are taking the properties from username and password from properties file. Now, one more thing is we can do it over here that uh, we can maintain our object repository also. Object repository means our xpath value, our name value, our id values, we can take it from properties as well. So this is another way some people they maintain their xpath and everything. If you don't want to use let's say page object model, a simple linear model if you want to use, you can read your uh, objects property means object property means the locator values the name css selector class name xpath all those things also you can maintain in your config.properties file although i'm not a big fan of this but in some framework you can see such kind of design as well so let's see i want to write for uh, okay so you some people they maintain like this they make this properties file very heavy okay so let's see these are the all the global properties so we can segregate like this global properties then they will write like this of global login objects right and then they write like this username underscore what is the property you want to use id xpath name i want to use name is equal to username for password what do you want to use password underscore name is equal to password for login button right so they will write like this login underscore or maybe write like, like this login button underscore we want to use xpath is equal to whatever the xpath is there input type equal to 
submit whatever the expert same thing let's see for uh, free crm underscore logo underscore logo image underscore let's see for image what exactly they have written for logo image let's see we will be using this class class name is equal to this right so you can maintain your properties like this with the field name free crm logo image class name login button x path username field name name is the property property mean locator password underscore locator and then i can remove the hard coded values from here that let's see first immediately after the url launching i want to check the image is available driver dot find element by dot okay by dot what by dot this for image we have this okay so this is a class by dot class name and what is the class name class name i'll read the property from property dot get property what is the key this is the key is dot is displayed okay like this dot is displayed so by dot class name and what is the class name this is my class name prop dot get property and what is the property value property name is free crm logo image class name so it will read this property the value is ing responsive image responsive will be taken from here and then is displayed or not fine same thing i'll remove these hard coded values that what is the by dot name by dot name of username so this is the username i'll read the property like this prop dot get property this same thing for password prop dot get property property for password is password underscore name same thing i'll remove this hard coded value for xpath as well prop dot get property and uh, the key will be login button xpath and you have to write in double quotes guys because these all keys are available in the form of the strings now you can see i have removed everything all the hard coded values i have removed it so simple driver dot find element by dot class name prop dot get property property of you can see that free crm logo image class name so we are using class name attribute and then for username prop dot get property user underscore name get property password underscore name like this and prop dot get property login button underscore xpath right so everything we are reading it from property so tomorrow let's see uh this username property getting changed so simple you will come over here and then you will change it this is the biggest advantage of having config dot properties that you don't need to change in your script simple you will come over here and then change it over here let's see this xpath you're using 100 times in your script so 100 times you have to write like by dot xpath by dot xpath 100 times and xpath values also you have to write 100 times but simple you just write at a common place tomorrow type equal to instead of submit let's see type equal to uh, login you simple come over here and then simple change type equal to login so automatically at 100 places in your script automatically it will be updated so this is the biggest advantage of having uh, you know such kind of properties in your config dot properties file tomorrow your url is getting changed and you are using url 100 times in your script so let's you tomorrow you instead of free crm it will be like only free.com right so you have to change the url again and again you have to search where where exactly uh, where all i'm um, you know exactly i'm using my url in my script so let's say you found 100 times for 100 places in the different classes you have to go and then you have to change that thing. 
So this is not a good way of writing the code. So better you write that property at a common place, simple like this, and then change it. Okay. So simply the moment you change it over here, automatically everything will be updated because we are using this property. If this property, the value you are changing over here in your code also automatically it will be updated. So this is the like developers also they use this concept, properties concept like what is a QA environment value or a dev environment value or such kind of things. They use developers also they use that. Same thing automation engineers also we use properties like this. You can maintain your objects. Let's see for login. This is login page objects. Okay, same thing you can write it for home page objects, sign up page objects, forgot password page objects. You can maintain like this. Okay, after that you can write it for home page also. So page wise you can design. Okay, instead of page object model, you can design properties, all the objects in the form of properties. Okay, all the page, because ultimately what we do in page object model, we, we create separate Java classes and then we define all the page objects. Same thing you're similarly kind of thing you're doing over here. Uh, right now this is let's see login page objects, all the login page related things available over here. Same thing for I can write for home page objects, for search page objects, for different pages, for contacts page, for deals page. I can cre create the page objects like this and maintain all the objects according to the pages and then I can use in my script. Right? So this is the way you can do that. But the problem is if there are 100 pages are there and let's see each and every page is having 20 objects. It means 100 multiplied by 20, 2000 properties you are maintaining inside your config.properties file. It is too much. And 2000 properties means 2000 strings. 2000 unnecessary strings you are creating and you are loading those properties at a time. Then that's not a good approach. For small projects, you can do that. But for large applications, this is not a right approach. Okay. So this is about reading the properties and we will use the same concept at the time of page object model framework designing. So <clears throat> this is the very, very important topic and very important topic for uh, interview point of view also that how to read properties. There's just these three lines. That's it. Okay. And after that, you just need to use prop dot get property, get property and pass the key prop dot get property, pass the key, get the value simple. Right. Okay. Now let me close these two things. We will see one more concept today. How to generate okay logs. How to generate uh, execution logs. So to generate execution logs, we have to use log4j property. Okay. Log4j property is a third party api that we have to use so log4j api you have to enter one pom.xml file dependency over there for log4j property so we will come over here so so far we have seen selenium and html drivers similarly we have to add the proper dependency for log4j also because log4j is not part of java it's not coming through JDK or it's not coming through Selenium. So we have to add an extra dependency for that. So let me show you. So we will write simple log 4j. So Okay, so about log 4 I'll tell you one very interesting thing that it is also developed by one Indian, this guy, Samudra Gupta, Samudra Gupta in 2005 actually. Anyway, so let's go to it.
okay and just simple save it so latest version is 1.2.17 and then we will add the see the maven dependency got added or not for log forge we can see that yes so log forge a jar file we got right we will close this pom.xml file now what we have to do guys you have to create one log 4j dot properties file okay i'll show you where exactly the format what is the format of log 4j dot properties no need to remember okay simple understand the concept no ask you the properties because these are very complex properties so simple log 4j dot uh, this is the thing that you have to create okay so let me merge means in sessions just a minute so earlier we have seen this uh, right src main resources we have created same thing now we have to create log for data properties also i'll just copy over here okay this log for data properties you have to write like log for don't change the name log for j that you have to give okay don't change the name log for j dot properties and these are the different properties you can see key and value pair format this is the key this is the value this is the key this is the value this is the key Okay, and this is a value, but nobody is going to ask you that. Okay, these are the property. These are the standard properties provided by log 4 jpa So I'll tell you about these properties that, like, uh, what exactly kind of uh, uh, root category? My root category will be debug console and file level execution. I want to monitor. I'll tell you what exactly. What do you mean by monitoring and all those things? and uh, what is the layout the conversion pattern layout that i want to generate my logs with this particular format so no need to remember this format you just need to copy paste nobody's going to ask you this is mmddyy format that uh, what is the date today and number of hours minutes and seconds generate the logs and then give me the output for that and uh, what is the maximum file size of your uh, you know logs so maximum file size will be 10 mb 10 mb file log will be generated and once this 10 MB file is full, uh, we can create, we can take one backup also automatically. One backup will be taken. And then 10 times the maximum backup index is equal to 10 means 10 times we can take the backup. It means 10 multiplied by 10, it means 100 MB uh, logs we can generate. And then uh, I'll tell you what do you mean by append equal to true. And these are the standard layout, pattern layout, and uh, conversion pattern certified with ISO 8601 or something like this. Don't change any character over here. But don't worry, even I don't remember all these things because these things, the simple standard things, you just need to copy paste. Nobody's going to ask you that if someone is asking that, that's a stupid question. That why people, I mean, there is no point to remember all these things. So nobody will ask you, don't worry about that. So after that, what we have to do is that. Uh, Mm, I'll show you one code. No, not this. I'll show you one. Okay, forget about it. So what we have to do, let's see, I'll go to my package. I'll create one class. generate logs okay and now we will see how to base generate logs so what we do that uh, to generate the logs guys what we have to do immediately we have one class available logger class logger dot one method is there get logger okay 
logger dot get logger and uh, we have to pass one value over here that the value is this class name value dot class okay so logger dot this logger class is available in where it's coming from log 4j that we have used right that we have downloaded through dependency so one method is there logger dot get logger method and for which class you want to generate the logs so i want to generate logs for this particular class so just write your class name dot class and this get logger will give you one logger reference okay so just store like this logger let's see log is equal to this okay so after that line what we have to do now let's see i'm writing my web driver driver equal to same thing okay and then we will so after that let's see i want to write that log dot info method is there with this particular log log dot info you can write your own logs let's see something like this launching browser right launching browser after that driver dot get my url will be http colon let's see google.com and then again i'll write log dot info info is that google url has been launched right after that what we have to do that uh, let's see what i want to get the title so simple i'll be using driver dot just a minute guys just a minute sorry for that so simple that after that driver dot let's see want to get the title get title and then under store in some string variable that the string title is equal to this right and then i'll print on the console system dot auto print and then title value is title and in the log and in the logs also so system dot out dot print telling will generate a log, uh, generate this value on the console but the same value i want to generate in my log file also so log dot info that simple and write same thing title value is title and then i'll verify the title let's see if title dot simple equals Google and write system dot auto print ln. I'll print that okay. Correct title is Google and then I'll make one entry in log also log dot info. Simple and write this correct title is Google and test case is passed else simple correct title is not google correct title is not go google and test case is failed simple so if title dot equals google simple make an entry on console system dot out print talent and one entry in log file also and but where is your log file so in the log file it will be generated over here and you see that application dot log one application dot log file this is the file name will be generated automatically right and uh, but where exactly in your project it will be generated and all the logs will be generated over there so let's run this program and then we will see right now we don't have any log for i mean application dot log file 
So let's run it and you will see. So you will see it's launching Google and then okay you can see see it's generating the logs as well over here and we will see um, just refresh this project application dot log file got generated and it's generating the logs over here simple launching browser what is your class name my class name is generate logs line number 16 launching browser time is this today is 27th july 7 55 30 seconds 407 milliseconds this is the info the main method that generate logs line number 16 launching browser then google url has been launched then title value is google and correct title is google and test case is passed right so this is how we read loggers okay I generate the logs so same logs are getting generated over here as well you can see and this is the system dot outward print talent and this is log dot info right so we can generate the logs but the thing is you have to write log dot info whenever it is required right so whenever it is required you have to write and then after that let's see how we want that end to end test case that driver dot quit and then simple log dot info browser is closed okay so let's run it again and we'll see this application dot log we will see again it is you can if you refresh this application dot log once again see launching the browser google url has been launched title value is google correct title is google and test case is passed and browser is closed so it is generating new logs so the earlier logs got ended over here 755 now after two minutes again we executed 757 so new logs are getting appended every time because of this property append equal to true if you make append equal to false it means don't append generate new logs every time right now what will happen automatically it will clear all these logs and then it will generate the new logs so if you run it you will see see all the logs got removed and then <coughs> new logs will be generated over here if you refresh you will see new logs are getting generated every time now the latest time is 758 so it depends on you that how exactly you want to generate the logs you want to maintain previous logs as well you can maintain like this so in that case you have to use append equal to true if you want to generate new logs every time simple use that right so this application dot log is very useful instead of reading the console or something you just simple open this file and you can check what is the execution is going on what kind of execution is going on simple so launching the browser google url is being launched title value is google correct title is this browser is closed and some exact kind of things developers also they do the same thing to generate the logs and everything okay so the same concept we will be using in our framework to generate the logs to monitor now what do you mean by monitor monitor means execution logs to check how exactly going on what is going on with respect to the log generation and everything.